So this is, this is the yield curve. We're going, we're doing economics today. If I'm going to loan Caitlin $10 and she's going to pay me back in a month versus me loaning Caitlin $10 and she's going to pay me back in 10 years. Do you think the interest rate would be higher for the 10 years that she has my money or for the 30 days that she has my money? For the 10 years, that is correct. Because I can't access that money for 10 years. And what happens if interest rates are 20% in 10 years and I lend it to her, to her at 3%? That would be problematic, right? So a typical yield curve, this is in years, and this would be interest rate. So you would expect shorter term to be a lower interest rate than longer term, right? It's just a factor of risk. Okay, I know Caitlin's good for the money in 30 days, but you know, is Caitlin gonna start sniffing around that, that airplane glue, you know, start tweaking out, and then she doesn't pay me back. So I need a better return the longer my money is held. But what we're seeing right now is an inverted yield curve. So short-term rates are higher than long-term rates. So this, this shaded area, is the depth of the inversion, and it's very rare to have an inverted yield curve. Why would it be rare to have an inverted yield curve? Why the hell would you take a lower interest rate for longer-term money and a higher interest rate for shorter-term money? Because it means a sign of a recession, number one. I remember that yield curve inverted a lot in 2006, 2007, 2008, but also what does that have to say about mortgage rates? There's an assumption that interest rates will be lower in the future than they are today. The, the yield curve should always look like this. The actual yield curve is inverted. Essentially, the markets are predicting interest rates will be lower in the future than they are today. Is that good news or bad news for us? Yes. At the top center of every Wall Street Journal during the week is the 10-year treasury. What I tell you guys, the 10-year yield, 10-year treasury was two weeks ago. It's 4.25. What's the 10-year treasury today? 3.8, right? So that's another interesting thing is this is indicative of what a 30-year mortgage should be. What are rates today? So this is what they should be according to the market, but this is what they are. Why? Mortgage availability index is down. It's harder to get a loan. Less banks are lending right now and less banks are lending right now because the government's no longer buying mortgages. The government's actually selling the mortgages that it owns. It owns about two, 20 trillion. I did it in one of my real estate seminars. I went through the number, it was wild. So, so the reason we had lower interest rates, they were actually below the 10-year treasury for a while, was because everything that a lender lent, the government bought. And they could lend more money and then sell it, get their money back, lend it again. So you could take the same $10 million and just over and over and over. Charge your fees, charge your fees, charge your fees, sell it, sell it, sell it, sell it. Well, now those were all three and a half, four, four and a half percent mortgages. And the government's selling those into the market. And which would you rather have? Would you rather buy a 6.5% interest rate loan that pays you? Or would you rather have a 3.5% interest rate loan that pays you over time? I'd take the higher one, right? So now, those loans that were lent at 3.5% that they're now selling, they're selling for a deep discount because the interest rate's a hell of a lot lower than what market is right now. So if you're going to talk me into, into lending you money right now, I'm going to need to make more money on this money because it has to be valuable when I sell it. Someone has, I have to have a buyer. There's no buyers at that low rate. The market's flooded with cheap mortgages. No one wants them because there's no return on them because the interest rates are damn low. So now what we're seeing is what it should be versus what it is. And that's because of the availability of mortgage money is super low right now. And that's why you're seeing interest rates stay higher when they should be here, which is super frustrating. Would we be selling a hell of a lot of houses if they were anywhere, if they were in the fives? So keep that in mind when people ask, is it a good time to buy? Yeah, and here's why. 
rates will eventually come back to this, right? Every time you ever seen a pendulum swing, so that's what happens. We were, money was too cheap and now it swung to money's too expensive. But what happens, does it stay up here? It's gonna swing back. We, like this would be equilibrium, but we never find equilibrium in any market. Stock market, wouldn't it be nice if it just went up 4% a year? <laughs> right, it kind of looks like a pendulum on its side. This action is this action, right? So they, they went up, we, we hit eight. See if I can do an eight with my left hand. Nope. We hit eight about a month ago. Now we've come back down, we're in the sixes. I've seen a little bit of a tick up in the market. The point of all this is you have to understand what's happening in order to talk to your clients about this. Because what do you think the average real estate agent is talking right now as far as real estate, um, as far as interest rates go? Are rates gonna go up? Are rates gonna go down? Is it a good time to buy? What if your client asks you why? So to review, a recession is looming. I forgot to tell you guys this. You know what happens at the end of a recession? Average, so sorry, what's a BP? What's a basis point? 1% on a loan, 1% interest is 100 basis points. Okay, so 2%, 200 basis points. 3% 300 basis points. So when you go to borrow money, they're gonna say, okay, we can give you a six and three eighths loan, 6.3875 but it's gonna cost you 50 bips. So it's gonna cost you one half of 1% of the loan amount to get that rate, right? Or half a percent. But lenders, like the financial world, goes by basis points. So that's just simply 2.52%. At the tail end of recession, mortgage rates tend to drop by, on average, over since we've been recording this, 2.52%. Are we gonna stay in a recession forever? No. And when we come out of it, what do you think mortgage rates are gonna do? two and a half percent or 250 basis points. So we're seeing the signs of a recession in the markets. The recession started about seven months ago, by the way. Are you saying that it's like in, coming in another 16 months? <laughs> Pick up the phone, call an electrician. Hey, are you busy today? What will he say? Yes, I am busy because I'm working through the six month backlog of work I had from a year ago. How many bids have you been doing lately? What's the future look like? Do we got no work? We're busy, but there's no new jobs coming up. Said, yeah, we're, we're seeing the same thing. Like, you know, we went from 60 pendings down to, you know, 25. So because it's, all of this stuff has momentum like a car, right? If you just pop it into neutral, you're not just gonna stop immediately. You're gonna and then eventually you'll stop. So that momentum is all the work that was planned and paid for with interest rates that they nailed down a year, two years ago. Commercial projects, I mean, think about like the Asante, uh, when they build the other wing of the hospital, they funded that thing probably six years ago and just finished it today. So that was six years in the making for that work. So those guys are gonna be busy, but there may not be another hospital project, or maybe there is one after that, but the ones that would start now that would give them work in two years aren't starting because the rates are so high because of the recession. So it takes a long time to slow it down but it also takes a long time to ramp it back up. So knowing that we're in a recession, at the end of a recession, interest rates drop, and we know that because we saw the yield curve is the most inverted. This spread is bigger than it's been since the 80s. We know that the 10-year treasury indicates what a 30-year mortgage should be because we know that very few people keep a loan for 30 years. The average is five to seven. So banks will say, okay, we need to get slightly better than what we could get with a 10 year treasury, right? If we're gonna lock up our money for 10 years, let's get a little bit more in a mortgage. Hopefully they pay it off sooner and then we can recycle that money. So 10 year treasury is, is a 30 year mortgage, but it's higher right now because there's less availability in the mortgage world because the government's no longer buying loans, they're actually selling them. So less lenders are lending because there's less buyers buying the loans. So to get the buyers to buy the loans, you have to offer a higher return. Yeah? So here's what happens. Buy now. The reason you would buy now is because interest rates are high and there's not very many buyers buying right now. Okay? This is also a good time to buy stocks. The smart people are buying stocks right now. Who's buying real estate right now? The smart people are buying real estate right now. What are the sheep gonna do? When are the sheep gonna buy in the stock market? 
And it's too damn late because everyone starts doing it. So when do you think the sheep are going to go start purchasing homes? When rates are low and everybody's buying homes. What happens when the rates drop and everyone starts buying homes again? Multiple offers. Prices go up. Waved inspections. Okay, so you're going to buy now because be greedy when people are fearful and be fearful when people are greedy. Is there more fear or more greed in the markets right now? What does that mean? Rates will drop. Everyone. So this is a time you can actually buy a house and get a decent deal. But if you wait, you're going to be disappointed. <clears throat> you can get, you can date the right now. Your lender will refinance you or just drop the interest rate when they go down. That's the promises lenders are making right now because lenders need to lend. But no one's borrowing right now, which means no one's buying, which means sellers are getting desperate. I got a verbal offer for like 40000 under ask on one of my listings and my sellers are considering it because they got to go and no one's buying anything. So these buyers are going to get a great deal. They're going to get significantly below market on an amazing home. And then these buyers are going to refinance in 12, 18, 24, 36 months for a lower rate as the property has shot up in value because as soon as mortgage rates drops, everyone's going to jump back on the real estate dog, bid back up. So we're in this really unique situation, right, where values did this and they're doing this right now, but eventually they're going to do this. So this is the dip. This is where you want to buy because that's when the rates were the highest. And are rates higher today than they were three weeks ago? They're lower. So we're already on, we're past the bottom of the dip, right? We know that. Now, will it... Could it potentially do this again? What would this be though? Another buying opportunity. But we know at some point it's going to do this. And now the opportunity is gone. And if you're buying here because you didn't want to buy here, right? You'd be like, dude, dude. 10-year treasuries indicating mortgage rates are 2% higher than they should be because there's not much mortgage availability right now because the government's not buying loans. The 10-year, the, the, the yield curve is inverted, which means we're headed into a recession. We know at the tail end of a recession, the last year of a recession, interest rates tend to drop between 2 and 2.5%, two and which is going to spur the economy to get people to get moving again. But by the time the rates drop, it will be too late. You need to buy now when the rates are high and know that rates will not stay high forever because everything swings and everything has a season. There's fall. After fall comes winter. After winter comes spring. After spring comes summer. And then what comes again? And then how about the moon? Does it have phases or is the moon the same all the time? It's going to be the guy. And then it gets bigger, bigger, bigger. And then a big guy. And then sometimes it's like a really big guy. Right? Like the, the harvest moon. <clears throat> What about El La Nina, El Nino? Like everything in this world is a cycle. So if you know how cycles work, if you know that after winter comes spring, you wouldn't plant in the winter, but it may be a good time to buy a boat in the winter. Why would you want to buy a boat in the winter? Because no one else is buying boats in the winter. Ah, but you want to buy a boat in the summer, but is it a good time to buy a boat in the summer? Why? <laughs> Yes. So right now is a little bit of a winter for boats and also a little bit of a winter for homes. There's less buyers out there right now. So it's a good time to buy one. Don't buy a boat in the summer, right? All you would have had to have done is just bought it a few months beforehand. You could have saved 10,000 bucks. And it's true. 15, 20,000. The dude's selling his boat because he needs the money, right? Because no one that's a, a rocket scientist is selling a boat in the winter. I'm going to buy a boat this winter and then I'm going to sell my boat this summer. I'll have two boats for a little bit, but I'll get this one for less and sell this one for more. Right? So they're like double on sale. Make sense? Seriously. I, if, when, when should you buy a snowmobile? In the summer. summer. Why? There's no snow. You guys tracking? You seeing this? So that's why people need to buy right now, but they're, they're going to need this to be explained to them right? Stocks. Buy stocks right now. 
they're 30, 40, 50% off of what they were six months ago when you were buying them. And then everyone's gonna start feeling warm and fuzzy about the stock market, and they're gonna shoot up, and then people are gonna buy, and then it'll keep going higher and higher. So you could have bought, you know, Apple for, I don't know, 100 bucks a share today, but instead, we're gonna be idiots and buy it at 135 when everyone else is after the news comes out saying how great Apple is. After the news comes out saying, hey, housing's recovering, interest rates are down, everyone's gonna pile on, and our smart clients be like, yeah, I know. We knew this was gonna happen. We knew rates wouldn't stay high forever. We knew house prices wouldn't stay down forever. So we bought our boat in the winter time. Maybe we bought two boats in the winter and then we'll kick one off. We'll sell one when, when things get good. Wouldn't that be a concept? That's my rant about the market. You think that you can use some of this to articulate this to your clients. Cause they've got to know why and they've got to believe you. And that, that is what gives us here an unfair advantage over other agents. How many other principal brokers or, or team leaders are having these discussions with their people? How many, how many other people even understand this shit? But it's like, all I do is read this. Like I'll give my mind's a little bit different, but I read this, I'm like, oh, the yield curve inverted. I'm like, I remember in 2007 when it inverted. I was, uh, I graduated from college December 7th, 2007. And I opened the Wall Street Journal that day and the big headline, instead of US defeats Iran, was the US is officially in a recession. I could not get a job for $12 an hour with a college degree. Because the US entered a recession, it was a terrible time to try to get a job. So that's why we need to read the Wall Street Journal and that's why we have these conversations. Because if you're not having these conversations, your clients can't possibly win because they don't even know what winning looks like. But if you know what winning looks like, this things, this, all this stuff starts to make sense. You think, oh, interesting. I didn't realize that the stock market could be tied to the seasons, which could be tied to the lunar cycle, right? Everything is a pendulum. It gets too far out of whack this way, then it gets too far out of whack that way, and then it's perfect for a little bit, then it gets crazy again, right? Just like the stock market, super frustrating, but that's life. So if you understand how life works, how the world works, then you can articulate to that to your people and you can help them win right now. And when they win, we win, right? Man, I'm so glad you talked me into buying that house when interest rates were 7%. Now they're at 4% and there's no freaking way I would be able to buy a house. We would have, pay, we would have had to have paid $100,000 over asked to get the house with a 4% interest rate, but instead we got it for 40,000 less. We had the seller pay all of our closing costs and then we refied. So we got a good deal and we got a good rate. We just had to wait because they don't happen at the same time. Good rate, bad deals, right? Bad rate, good deals. So. Bad rate, good deal, refi. Win-win. Should be patient.